The impact of direct energy on modern day warfare could be very dramatic. It's a very disruptive technology. And so the country that is able to develop and field these capabilities first will have a distinct advantage on the battlefield. Imagine if you're the commander of a U.S. Navy ship in international waters, and you're being taunted by swarms of boats that are coming at you to try to get you to escalate the conflict. Imagine again, if you could flip a switch and stop those boats in their tracks without them being able to come any closer, with nobody getting hurt. That type of scenario is where directed energy could be a game changer. Directed energy is the use of electromagnetic energy, such as high energy lasers, high powered microwave devices, and laser SATCOM communication terminals. Direct energy has two primary applications. The first one is a very, very high intensity beam of light that has the ability to identify a target at a very, very long distance, or if necessary, to destroy that target at a very long distance. Another application of direct energy is a very highly high intense beam of radio frequency energy that can be applied to a target to disable that target to either disrupt the electronics or to cause damage in other fashion. One might imagine that directed energy is a relatively recent development in, in war fighting, when in fact it goes all the way back to Archimedes' time. It's reported that Archimedes used mirrors to direct the rays from the sun at approaching enemy ships to try to set their sails on fire. But today, we've gotten to the point where these weapons are becoming real and they have real applications in the 21st century. And it really is time for us to start getting these weapons into the hands of the warfighters. So the attributes of directed energy that make them so attractive is number one, they operate at the speed of light. Number two, they have very low cost per shot. Number three, they typically have very large magazines, almost unlimited magazines. And number four, they have stealth-like characteristics. They're very hard to detect and very hard to intercept. And number five, they can be dialed from both lethal to non-lethal. So today, if you look at almost every program in the department, whether you're talking about ground-based lasers or vehicle-based lasers or potentially airborne lasers, they are limited not by the technology advances, but by the funding that's been allocated to support them. Today, we're technology-rich and funding poor, which is why it is such an imperative for Congress to fund these types of efforts and to get these weapons into the hands of the warfighter so that we can be prepared to fight the battlefield of the future. And I think that that's what really excites me is being able to make an impact, to have an impact on the future of warfare, and to do that in a manner that uh, makes me very proud of being a part of that entire effort.